Hey everyone, Cream right here, and today I have Gabriel Boachi on with us. I hope that was good enough. Yeah. Gabriel, how's it going? I'm good, and you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So where are you right now? Are you, are you still in Canada or? Yeah, yeah, I'm just home right now in Toronto. Yeah. Nice. All right, I'm in the GTA too. So, I mean, the team that you play for is FC Edmonton. How is it over there? Uh, it was good. Um, I was only there for a few months because um, I was coming from Germany. But uh, yeah, it was tough in the beginning uh, being away from the game because I was injured and then getting back into the things. So yeah, it took some time, but went well. Got it. All right, so can you please introduce yourself to the viewers real quick? Yeah, so I'm uh, Gabriel Bocci, I'm 23, from Toronto. Um, my background is Ghanaian. Um, I grew up playing in Toronto FC in the Canadian national team program. Um, yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm glad to have you on. So how'd you get introduced to football? Um, honestly, I was just playing in the schoolyard with like other kids. And then like one day I just told my dad, okay, I want to play soccer. Cause like I, I always play different sports, but soccer was the one sport that I was really focused on. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I think I was eight years old, seven or eight years old when I, when I actually started in the team. And then, yeah, it just went on from there. Okay, got it. So fairly young, seven or eight. So can you just take us to the pathway of, you know, how you became a professional footballer, right? That's what everybody wants to know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as I said, when I was eight, I started playing and then I just got more into it. Um, and then I went to, I was first playing for Oak Ridge's soccer club. And then I went to Spartacus, I think I was like eight, nine years old. It was my first rep team. Um, and I was there for about five years. They kind of developed me, um, I learned a lot. And then I went to, I think it was Richmond Hill, Richmond Hill Raiders, yeah. And I was there for like a winter season, did well. Went to West Toronto and then went back to Richmond Hill. Um, and then after Toronto, I went to Toronto FC. So like that year, like a lot of players had moved to Toronto FC. Um, and then there I just like, you know, played in a professional environment. I learned the game from all the coaches, um, experienced new things. And then I joined the national team, I was 14. So I was playing with Toronto FC and then uh, was also with the national team. And then honestly, from there, I just kept playing, 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 getting better. And then I got my opportunity with the second team at Toronto FC to play in the USL. I was 17 at the time. And then, yeah, so that's where my professional career started. Um, and then I decided I wanted to play in Europe. Um, and then, yeah, I moved to my first club was Energy Cottbus. So then I played in the U19 Bundesliga, uh, which was a great experience. And then the next season after that, I uh, joined the first team. Um, we got promoted to the third division that season. Um, Actually, luckily, my first season there with the first time I played quite a bit. And then after that, yeah, I, I uh, moved to Cologne and then, yeah, so on and so forth from there. Got it. So that's usually a trend, right? Like for players in Canada that, you know, they hop to different teams. It's just how it is. Um, for now, at least, hopefully, things change. But yeah. you mentioned a couple of clubs that I am familiar with that I've played against. Um, through my youth as well. Uh, so you mentioned Toronto FC. How important was was it for you to be there and how much of an impact did TFC have on your career? Um, I think it was very important because at the time, after like all the players that I was playing against and playing with, we kind of moved to TFC. So like, I guess like that's where the, the best group of players were. So like the competition kind of got watered down because I guess the best players had moved um, to TFC. So like being in that environment um, where you're getting the best coaching, you're training against the best players, um, you're getting opportunity to train against older players and play against older players and then um, you're able to travel and, and then you're kind of getting you're getting noticed by the national team because you're in this professional environment. So I think it was very important because if I maybe would have stayed at the club level, 
um, I wouldn't have been exposed to those things. Um, maybe not at that time, maybe later on I would have, but I think for that period of my, my career, it was definitely very important to be in and around those people um, that ultimately helped me and shaped me to the player that I am today. Absolutely. What position do you play? Ah, uh, a load of positions. Uh, I can play winger, I can play striker. Occasionally I can play right back. Um, I've played 10, I've played, yeah, I've played all over, but I would say winger, striker, uh, fullback sometimes, yeah. Got it, so you'd be busting up the net, scoring some goals. <laughs> I went when I want it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure, so, you know, going back to 17, you signed your first professional contract with Toronto FC in the USO one, or was it USO one, right? So at that time, uh, it was U the, so the USL championship. It was just like the USL oh, one. Yeah. So um, I didn't have like a contract contract because I was still in the youth, and I I wasn't like at the time I wasn't sure of actually signing um, a professional contract because I didn't know if I wanted to go to school. So they had this like agreement. Uh, it's like a youth agreement so like i was able to play with with the the second the second team to go in a professional league and then but i wouldn't be i wouldn't lose my uh ncaa eligibility so then that's what i kind of did um, so i was able to play professional and then not lose that during the time yeah that's that's interesting you know usually players just want to go straight to pro sometimes right yeah. but that's pretty cool so um education is very important to the family then yeah <laughs> Got it. So did you end up um, doing both or what you end up doing? Honestly, I end up sticking with football. It's, it's pretty funny, but uh, it's definitely something I want to do later on. But um, I think at the time I was so like consumed by football because at 17, it's just football, football, football. And then I had school also. I was still in high school at the time. And I was also with the national team. So it was like every... I think it was like every month I was traveling mm -hmm. and like every week then we'd have games so it was, like, it was just constant like I couldn't even keep up I literally had to do online school because it was just so much um, and then honestly I made the decision like I think it was at yeah 18 after I finished high school 19 um, I just said like this is like footballs I'm gonna focus on this that's what I want to do yeah. um, that's the that's the lifestyle right there that everybody every footballer dreams of having right and then you were doing online school in a time that online school wasn't really a big thing like that it is now right yeah it's, uh, it's very normalized now due to covid so on and so forth but would you say that you officially got signed at 17 or when would you say you officially signed your pro contract uh it probably in germany when i was 19 18 19 so still young so how did it feel you know to finally achieve your dream and accomplish it um i think because i had big goals and aspirations it was just like okay what's next like i don't want this to just be it. i want i want to play i don't want to just be the young player that just signs with the first team and he's just there i want to actually have an impact and luckily that season um i think i had 21 games and nine goals and got promoted. So, like, as a young player, it was massive for me. Um, so, yeah, like, it, was, it wasn't, it was like, I wasn't shocked. Or I wasn't, like, oh, my gosh, I have a professional contract. Oh, my, like, you know, I was just like, okay, what's next? Like, how are we going to get to the next level? How are we going to take the next step? That's that's amazing. You scored 29 goals. No, not nine goals, 21 games. <laughs> oh, nine goals in 21 games. I said, I thought you said 29 goals. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's really <laughs> nine goals is still great. So yeah. um, you signed pro. Let me drop these numbers real quick. Um, so according, so there's 250 million players around the world that play the beautiful game around the world at different levels. But there's only uh, 130,000 130,000 professional footballers around the world, according to FIFA's 2019 report. This is back in 2019. I don't know if it's increased or whatever the case may be, but that's not even 1%, and you're a part of that. So that's 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 massive. What advice would you give to young footballers? Um, I'd say work hard, work very, very hard, be willing to sacrifice and 
and risk it all and enjoy it like enjoy every moment good the bad it's all part of the process um and yeah just just enjoy like remember that you play football because you you enjoy it um and when you get older we have these contracts and and people talking in your ear and you have coaches and stuff you kind of lose sight of, of why you play and it kind of takes the fun out of it so just remember to always enjoy yourself while you're playing yeah you know we're tapping into something a little bit more serious here on the side of you know when you're young you had you're having so much fun but then this thing turns in at least if you make it as you did this thing turns into soccer turns or football turns into a job what things changed once you signed um in germany for you um because now you're getting paid for what you love to do right it's a job yeah. now so uh, i think i think that the winning factor is it really matters um you have fans on your back so you're not only playing for yourself um discipline discipline changes a lot you have to really be disciplined and i get other players aren't but maybe they just they can do that but um yeah discipline um yeah i'd say those are the biggest things that changed for me i i just wasn't able to just be free like i was like i was before because so much was on the line uh, but you know the pressure is nice so just gotta enjoy that guys so you you've played in front of thousands and thousands of fans you know they call it the 12th man on the pitch how have you been able to deal with it and you know what do you like about it what do you dislike is, is there anything you dislike about it i love it i love it i feed off of it um honestly fans are better than no fans um whether you're away or home like it's just a great atmosphere to be in even if they're yelling bad things at you it's just like because when you're, i mean as like me, me when i play on the field i can't really hear what they're saying but say if they were to say something bad i just kind of feed off them just like okay let me just prove them wrong so i love it i love the energy i love that atmosphere i don't i haven't experienced anything really bad so i can't say i don't i don't like anything about it but yeah so far i love that i love Got it nice so you went to germany after germany where did you go because i i didn't i want to make sure i'm on track with you here so you went yeah. so after germany yeah so um i was in germany just till last year um i was injured for uh, it was like five months uh and then I didn't extend my contract at the club that I was at. So then I wanted to, you know, get back into things, play my football. Um, so then I came back home and then I played in the CPL. I think it was for like two and a half, three months. It wasn't that long because uh, it was towards the end of the season. Um, so yeah, I, I was in Germany for about six years. So <laughs> a long time, yeah. So you but, know how to speak German then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Can you say something? Can you say I love football? Uh, I should leave a football. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's sick. I like that, man. So, you know, you played in Germany for six years. Let's get into the nitty gritty a little bit here. Did you have an agent during your signing process? Were you a foreigner um, going in to Germany? Yeah, so I, I've I always had agents from, I think it was 18 to, well, till now. Um, yeah, so when I when the deal was being done, I had my agent there, um, and yeah, they dealt with everything there, so it worked out. Got it. Yeah, I know. So they took care of that process, and then did you learn how to speak Germany over there, or was it something that you were? Uh, so basically, I had a, a teacher there, and my first club. The thing is, like, I when I when I came there, I didn't know any German whatsoever. Um, and the team that I was in when I got to the first team, especially, everyone spoke English with me. So like I had the teacher at the time, but you can only go so far if you're not really speaking it. You can learn it, but you have to speak. It. So um, I kind of knew it, and I would say things in German in my head, or like create scenarios in my head, and then Google Translate how to say it in German. And um, but I would never actually say it out to people. Until I actually went to Cologne, I thought, okay, it's a fresh start. 
let me just start speaking German to everybody. Nobody really knows me uh, personally. So yeah, I just went there and I started speaking German and I did not know how good I was at it. And then it just got better and better and better. And now I can speak fluently. Yeah, that's awesome. Ger Ger German's a language I like. It sounds so unique and I know I've heard it. I've heard that it's it's difficult to learn per se. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, power to you, man. That's amazing. Thank you. So played in Germany for six years after got injured. What advice would you give to players for um, dealing with injuries and getting back into the game, right? Because you can get injured and then that could affect you mentally, physically, right? So 100%. Um, I would say, well, first of all, I would say do the things before. So like if you have a prevention plan, you should do a lot of stretching, do a lot of if you have to work out a lot or, you know, do certain exercises to help your body because there were times in my career where I did certain things more than I did other things. Maybe I worked on the pitch more than I should have worked in the gym and maybe that kind of offset things in my body. Um, and speak to somebody like if you, if, because I remember when I got injured in Cologne, it's my first big injury. I tore my syndesmosis band and I was devastated. I just moved to a new club and I got injured. And uh, I started speaking to psychologists, um, mm. to help get through that, um, learning different techniques of having to, to, to deal with certain stress or anxiety, um, having, being able to look at the situation as positive and not only negative, because there was positives too. Um, so yeah, speak to someone, if it's a friend, family friend, family member, psychologist, whoever it is, and take the time to like really come down and, and, and get away from the game because that kind of like, if you are stressed often, that kind of goes onto your body um, and that can cause injury also. It's just like, make sure you get your mind right and do the things to, to get yourself right. That's power, that's powerful. We, you know, was it someone say go, you know, you should check out psychologists, the psychologist come to you, how did that come about? That's powerful right there. Honestly, it was really right. Like I, I had always thought about it, um, but I didn't take it so seriously. Um, and then one day, I remember I was, I was, uh, I was back from injury, and I think I was like maybe a week back, but I was still kind of down because like I was kind of behind from the other players. I just got injured right before the season started, a week before, and I was doing so well. And this one player, he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll drop you at home." And I'm like, "Okay." Um, and on the way there, he's like, oh, uh, what are you doing today? I'm like, oh, I'm just going to chill. I asked him, what is he doing? He's like, yeah, I'm just going to go see uh, the psychologist. psychologist. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go see the psychologist. I'm like, oh, can you give me the, the number? Or like, can you give me the club contact number so I can so I can choose which one I want? Because they had multiple, I think they had like maybe 15 or 20 different psychologists for the club. Got it. So to choose which one. Um, and then, yeah, I just like... I was like, you know, let me give it a try. And um, yeah, she, she really helped me out. <laughs> there are things like I didn't know about myself that I learned or uh, I, I try to understand things that I didn't understand before about myself, about my body, um, about my mind. Yeah, very powerful. That's, that's, that's very cool. I like that. So um, a lot, leading to the last two questions, you know, you've been able to play in different leagues. Which league was your favorite league that you played in so far? Uh, my favorite league. I want to say U19 Bundesliga. I'm going to say that. Um, in terms of quality, of course, it's not the best because when you get older, it gets better. But it just brings me back to a time where like, I was just free. I was young. I was playing against you know, the big name clubs. Um, so yeah, that was definitely the most fun for me uh, at that time. Got it. And the last one, what's been your most memorable soccer moment for you? Most memorable soccer moment? Um, I'd have to say either playing U17 or U20 World Cup qualifying or uh, getting promoted to the third division. For the Canadian national team, right? 
Yeah, correct. How's that? How's that? Uh, how has that experience been? How? How did I've never been able, never got the chance or asked about this, but what it? What is it like to re represent your national team? And what are the differences between national team games or playing being in that system to the professional league? Um. So first of all, it's amazing. It's a great feeling to to represent your country. Um, you honestly feel like you're on top of the world to be selected out of thousands and thousands of, of kids your age um, in the country. Um, yeah, it's a great honor. Um, I'd say the difference, usually when you played with the national team, you went to really warm countries. So that was very difficult to like adapt. Um, physically very, very demanding. Um, and I think it's just uh, maybe it's it's a it's a step higher in a different aspect because like when you're with your club you play with them all the time so like when you're with the national team you have to step up but you also have to find a way to like mix and connect with other players so it just makes it that much harder so yeah I'd say that's the difference okay yeah that's nice all right we got the last part it's the five speed questions so Gabriel you gotta ask them quick okay no problem all right, so uh, who's your favorite team? Chelsea. Favorite player? Oh, goodness. Raheem Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> favorite pair of cleats? Favorite pair of cleats ever? Like ever. Oh, snap. Um, <laughs> you know those mercurials, the, the, the gold and white ones? The ones that uh, R9 used to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, are yeah, yeah. Those ones. Those ones. Fire. And last two, favorite food? Favorite food, fried plantain. Okay. Last one, favorite artist? Favorite artist? Right now, Heady One. Heady One, what's what's your favorite track by him? Uh, try Me. Would you say Try Me? Yeah, Try Me. I'm going to check it out after. Yeah, it's, it, it, he's honestly, I love him. I love him. Yeah. For sure. And where can you know the viewers find you for players that watch this and they're like, "Hey, I want to reach out to Gabriel." Where can they find you? I find my Instagram. My Instagram is Gabe Boachi, so J B E B O A K Y E. Um, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. And I do want to mention here quickly. You know, you, you you're making and you're in FC Edmonton, making history in the CPL right now. It's only the league's only been there for three years. So, congrats to you. Keep thank killing. You. And I just want to uh, thank you for taking the time for being on the One Soccer Nation podcast today. Thank you.